Hey guys, welcome back to another Ranch and Ford tutorial. In today's video, I'm showing you how to create a basic magnet in which we can just left click and pull an object towards us. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So we get in, we go to this object, I'm going to hold left click, it's going to come towards us and we can move around with it. If I let go, it's going to go back down as well. And you see, if we just hold and let go, it's going to stop like so. So it's just a basic magnet which will pull objects towards us. So recently I did a grapple hook which takes you to an object. Now this is just going to bring an object towards us. So this is what we're making today. It looks similar to an inspect item system, but it's not. So I will probably do a video of that in the near future of an inspect item. But today we're going to be making this. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So our first step we want to take is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's the third person character. So that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could be third, first, whatever you've named it. Once we're in here, we want to find some empty space. I'm going to scroll down here get some empty space, and we want to get an action mapping. So we're going to go to edit, project settings. Once this loads, we're going to scroll down to input down here. I'm going to hit the plus action mapping here. I'm going to name this one magnet. You can name this absolutely whatever you like, but that makes sense to me. I'm going to set this to be the left mouse button. Again, set this to whichever key you want as well. So you can have this as E or F or anything like that. And the benefit of action mappings is we can have multiple keys set up for different consoles. And we can also set up key bindings. So once you've done that, we're going to close that and then in the event graph back here, we're going to right click and search what we just named it. So I called mine magnet like so. And now we have it there. And now this is going to fire off our code to activate and deactivate the magnet. Now you can do this on whatever you like. So if it's a gun, you can do it from the, your fire, which you have or anything like that, any sort of code. This is just how we're going to be firing it off. So what we're going to do next is we're going to hit the plus variable and we're going to call this one magnet on question mark, leaving it as a Boolean. We'll compile and leave its default value as false, so it's not on. Off of pressed, we're just going to set that to be true, so tick it. And off of released, we're going to set it to be false, so leave it unticked. And so this is just us telling the code that when the player is holding down the left mouse button, they want the magnet to be on, and when they release the left mouse button, the magnet is off. So then we need to set up the code for the magnet being on. So we're going to do this using a custom event. So if we just go over to the right, find some empty space, right click, and add a custom event like so. I'm going to name this one magnet on as well or event magnet on anything you like and out of this we're going to hold down B left click to get a branch plugging that in there like so the condition of this is going to be magnet on so we only want to fire this code if the magnet is on and the reason we're doing that is because this is going to end up being a loop so to break the loop it's just basically be if the magnet's off that will break the loop off of true what we want to do is we want to get a line trace by channel like so and to draw this line what we want to do is we want to get a reference to our camera so that's the FPP camera for me, but for you it's going to be follow camera or whatever you've got it named as. It works best in first person, but it does also work in third. Out of your camera reference, we're going to get world location. Out of the return value of this, we're going to get an addition, so a vector plus a vector. And then the return value of just the get world location goes into start. So don't do anything with the addition just yet. Out of the camera again, we're going to get forward vector. So the forward facing direction. Out of this, we're going to get a multiply a vector multiplied by a float. And the value of this float is how long we want the line to be. So I want this to be 1500, but you can set this to 1000, 2000, 500, any value you like. And then this is going to go into the other value of the addition, and the addition goes in the end. So what we're doing is we're starting the line from where the camera is, and then we're going to go 1500 units in front of the camera and have that as the end. And the reason the addition is here is just to keep it going in a straight line. What we're going to do is we can put draw debug type as for duration so we can test it but i know this works so i don't need to so i'll leave it as none everything else will keep the same after this we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch plugging that into there like so and the condition of the return value and this basically just means if the line trace has hit something so if it has we want to see what it hit if it hasn't we're going to loop it so we'll do that in a second so out of the out hit we're also going to break hit result like so open up the options there and we're going to come out with hit component off of hit component, we're going to get is any simulating physics like so, because we only want to use the magnet on objects which are simulating physics. Now you don't need to do that if you don't want, it doesn't stop it from working, but it obviously does if we're using this. This is just how we're going to be doing it. Now you can do tags as well, so you can have a tag as magnetic, but I think the physics works just as good, if not better. It's easier for us to implement, and it's just quicker. So after this, we're gonna hold down B left click to get another branch with that return value as a condition, this branch going to the true of the first branch. So if we have hit something, we're going to see if it's simulating physics. If it is, so for true, we're going to right click the hit component again and promote a variable and call this magnet 
target, like so. Again, set that off of true. So what this is doing is it just means that this component here is the target for the magnet. So it's the object we want to be moving. I'm just going to double click this to get some reroute nodes in here, like so. Off of false, what I want to do is I want to hold down D left click to get a delay, setting this to something very small like 0 0.001. Plugging that into the false of that branch and the false of the first branch over here, like so. And I'll tell you why we're doing that in a second. Off of the completed of this, we're going to simply call function magnet on. And so now what this is doing is if we don't hit anything or the object we have hit doesn't have physics simulated, it's just going to loop this. So it's going to check again. And so it's going to be constantly looping and checking until we turn the magnet off or until we hit something which we want the magnet to move, i.e. the magnet target here. So after the magnet target, we want to move the target. So that's something else we need to set up as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down underneath this. I'm going to right click and add another custom event. And this one is going to be called move target like so. Again, you can name this whatever you like. This is just what makes sense for me. But actually, also before we set this up, what we need to do is off of our input action magnet here, off of set magnet on to be true, we're going to also call function magnet on. So we're telling the code the magnet is on, and then we're also actually activating it and calling this code here to constantly loop until we find something we want to magnetize and pull towards us, or until the magnet's turned off. So again, once we hit something, we want to pull off this event here. And to do this event, we want to get a reference so we can move it towards us. We want to get a reference of where we want it to end up. So to do that, we're going to go to the viewport here. I'm going to add a component. I'm just going to add a cube like so. And actually, I'll rename this one to be magnet reference. So this is where we want the object to end up. So I'm just going to move this out in front of the player to about there. So I think this is where I want the object to be once it's moved towards us. You can put this anywhere you like, but I think that's going to look good for me and what I want. So I think that's good like that. What I want to then also do is I want to scroll down until I find the collision settings. I want to just disable all of its collision. So untick all these, no, and set it to no collision. And I also want to untick visible and tick hidden in game so the player doesn't see this at all. It's as if it's not there, there's no collision and they don't see it. We're only using it for a reference so we know where to move the object to. I'm gonna go back to the event graph over here like so as now we have set that up. So now what we're going to do off of this move target event here is we're going to get a reference to our magnet target. So we set that variable earlier, so we can drag and drop get. Out of this, we're going to set simulate physics to be false, so leave it unticked. So we want the physics to be simulated for us to attach to it and to get it. We want to turn it off because if we leave it on, once we move it towards us, it's going to start glitching out and it will eventually just fly off out of the player's hand and it will glitch. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can leave that ticked, but it might make a cool thing that you want as well because it means that the player can only hold it for a certain amount of time before it just lets go, the magnet wears off, anything like that. But again, I'm going to leave it like this. And after this, I'm not going to connect up yet, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a timeline, like so, and I'm going to name this one move target T for timeline, like that. I'm going to double click this to open it up straight away. I'm going to set the length of this to be 1, like so, and then I'm going to add a float track here. Now you'll probably want to leave the length as one as well, and I'll show you why after we finish making this. This float track, I'm just going to name move track like so. I'm going to right click, add a key to curve float, time zero, value zero, right click, add another key, time one, so the end of our timeline, and value of one. So again, it goes from the start to the end like so. Close the timeline like that. Then what we want to do is open up our components tab here and get a reference to that move target T timeline there. We get that. Out of this, we're going to set play rate like that, plugging that after the set simulate physics and then into the play from start of the timeline, making sure it's the play from start so that every time we do it, it always goes from where the object is to our object magnet reference. This new rate, I'm just going to set as 0.3 as I want it to be a little bit slower than one second. So obviously you can set this up as the length in here, but this is just a little bit better because then if you want to create a dynamic system, which I did in my grapple hook video, you can then do that here as well. But I think 0.3 is going to be good for me because it's going to be a fixed distance anyway, a fixed maximum distance that is because that's the line trace. So I think a rate of 0.3 is good. Then after this, this is where we're going to actually move it. So off of update, we're going to move it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to our magnet reference there. So drag and drop in there. This we're going to get world location. So we're getting the location of where we want the object to end up. We're going to right click that return value, promote to variable. I'm going to call this one player location, or we can call this reference location, anything like that, but this makes sense for me. And we're going to plug that into update. 
So every time the timeline updates, so when we are moving it, we're going to be resetting the player location. So if the player is moving, then it's going to reset this like so. So it always ends up in the correct place. Then after this, we're going to drag and drop a reference to the magnet target here. Get magnet target. Out of this, we're going to set world location like so. Again, plugging that into the set player location there. So every time the timeline updates, we are actually moving the magnet target as well. So that's the object. We'll set up the new location in a second. So what we're going to do now is out of the move track, we're going to get a lerp and a lerp vector. The return value of that going to the new location there. So this is going to go from A to B using our timeline. A, we want to have as the actual magnet target location, so the object. So we're going to get another reference to the magnet target. Out of that, we're going to get world location, like so, plugging that into A like that. So it's going from where the object is. And B is we want it to go to, and that is the player location, which is this variable we set up here. So we're going to just drag and drop that in to B like that. And now this will work perfectly for us. So this is it done of actually moving it. But what we want to do is off of finished, we want to just call the function move target again, like so, so that it is looped, it stays there. So I'm just going to loop this timeline, always moving it to where the player is going. So if you move around, it moves with you until obviously we decide to stop it, which we'll do by just stopping the timeline. Then the final step is to go back up to our magnet input action here, off of false, so the released, we're going to call the reference to our timeline here, so magnet target T. Out of that, we're going to stop like so. So stop timeline like that, which is what I mentioned a second ago. And then we're going to get the magnet target, get magnet target. We're going to set simulate physics back to true. So plug that in there and tick it again like so. So now if we compile and save this, this should be the code done. So let's test this out now. So if we minimize this, hit play to test it. You can see we have that cube there. So actually I'll show you how to do that as well. So I, this is just a cube I drag and dropped in here. And then all I did was I just scrolled down and ticked simulate physics. And that way we can use it as a magnet target. So let's try this again. So now if we left click, you can see nothing's happening. And that's because we forgot one big step. So let me do that now. And I forgot to call this function here. So we've got the move target set up, but we need to call it off of this true branch up here. So we have true set magnet target, but then we'll need to just call function move target like so just forgot to do that so now if we compile save this will work perfectly and just quickly before i end it while i was editing this and i was coming to make the thumbnail i realized that there was actually a bug in this so if i hit play i'll show you what i'm saying so if we just hold down left click to use the magnet but we don't hit anything and then we let go when we exit we're going to get this error here access non trying to read property magnet target and when is it it's when we're trying to set the simulate physics if i click that it will take us here so what's happening is it's trying to access this variable here, but we haven't set it yet as we didn't hit anything here. So an easy way to avoid this is we're just going to move this out a little bit. So move the set simulate physics, come out of the magnet target and get an is valid node with the question mark there. Plug in the execution off of stop, is valid, we'll go into set simulate physics and is not valid, we will not go into anything. So we're only going to set simulate physics to true if we have a value in the magnet target variable here. And this should now fix this problem for us. So if we get rid of that, hit play, do the same thing. So I'm just holding it down here, let go. And you see, we don't have the issue, the error there anymore. So like I say, that's just a quick fix to a bug, which I found when coming to make a thumbnail for this. So we go back and now we can see we left click, we moved the magnet, we turn the magnet on, sorry, and move the object towards us like so. We're moving around, it stays with us. If I let go, it's gonna be put back down like so. And we can do this multiple times. I'll do it with this other object as well, like so. And this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, we've done everything we want to do. We set up a magnet in which we can hold down a button and the object will just come towards us and we can move around with it and stuff like that. And then we can let go whenever we don't want it anymore, like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.